The year is 1947. Jackie Robinson takes the field for the Brooklyn Dodgers, becoming the first African-American to play Major League Baseball. Howard Hughes conducts the first and only flight of the Spruce Goose, the largest airplane ever built. Chuck Yeager, a United States Air Force captain and World War II veteran, becomes the first person to break the sound barrier. And a young boy in New York City named Dan Golden discovers what would soon become his lifelong passion. When I was seven years old, my father took me to the Hayden Planetarium at the Museum of Natural History in New York City. I remember the day and I couldn't believe what I, I saw an asteroid, a piece of an asteroid. I saw uh, very fuzzy pictures of Mars taken with much lesser telescopes. I mean, for God's sakes, this was 1947. I'm older than a damn rock. Dan attended public school in the Bronx, then earned a Bachelor of Science degree in mechanical engineering from the City College of New York. After graduation, Dan moved to Cleveland, Ohio to begin his career at NASA's Lewis Research Center. I went there because they were working on a trip to Mars. I was working on ion and plasma engines and nuclear power supplies. And I was figuring we, we'd get there before 1980, and I started in 62. And the Vietnam War heated up and national security became an issue. And Cy Ramo at TRW had someone call me and I went to TRW. After joining TRW, Dan managed projects for both NASA and the Department of Defense, rising to the position of Vice President and General Manager. Over his 25-year career at TRW, he pioneered national security programs critical to the security of the United States and helped bring about the end of the Cold War. And just when we were having a collapse of the defense industry, I got a call from the President's office. In 1989, Congress encouraged President George H.W. Bush to reinstate the National Space Council, an advisory group that would align policy and strategy across all space sectors and provide a direct link to the White House. So this is a congressional initiative, which we all welcome. And I was the chairman of the Space Council, the first time of the congressionally enacted uh, Space Council. I was a member of the National Space Council during Bush 41's administration. We had asked the uh, administrator at the time to undertake a study to look at the cost of returning to the moon this time to stay. And the results of the study came back and essentially horrified us. And that was a uh, red flag to many of us that perhaps we, we need to find new leadership. I looked at what was going on at NASA, I said, this is, this is not going to work. Uh, this is simply not going to work. We got to bring in, you know, somebody that's got energy, that's got leadership capability, somebody who comes from perhaps the private sector that can really shake things up. And that's when we found a guy by the name of Dan Golden. I didn't want to take the job because at the time NASA was in a lot of trouble. Oh man, were they in trouble. I interviewed him. Uh, I said, you really want to make this transfer? I mean, you're doing quite well at TRW. It's a big position. We're not going to be able to pay you as much, but it's something that's good for the country. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll do a good job. He says, yes, sir. He says, I'm ready to, you know, salute and, and carry on and do the best I possibly can. I first met Dan Golden when I was in the United States Senate, and I was chairing the Space and Science Subcommittee which had responsibility for NASA the, on the authorizing side. Uh, and uh, when there was a big appointment there that required Senate uh, approval, it went through my subcommittee. So the uh, Bush Quail administration had run off the uh, previous administrator um, and uh, they appointed this new person that came to meet me, uh, Dan Golden, and I'd never heard of him, didn't know him. But uh, the more I talked with him, the more I impressed I was with him. He was the kind of person that said, you know, if this is what you want, and this is what our goal is, I know how to get there. 
Golden arrived at NASA at a time when many outside observers viewed the agency as a bloated bureaucracy. I think where the bureaucracy part came in was, you know, with Congress, with the administration, where they felt that it was just an enormous workforce, what are they doing? And the key focus through much of this was on the workforce at uh, Kennedy Space Center, Johnson Space Center, Human Space Flight, Marshall, etc. And that there was a strong feeling that it had grown too large and was unwieldy. In an era of constrained federal budgets, Golden reduced NASA's workforce without any forced layoffs. He also pioneered the faster, better, cheaper approach to cut costs in new science projects while still delivering timely results. Dan, having come from the business side, uh, had a, a pretty good grasp on how some things could be saved by getting people who were already in the private sector, if NASA could, could buy cheaper, significantly cheaper, and get high quality by, by uh, buying it from the outside, that can make the whole process be faster, cheaper, better. Dan had to grapple with how do you do this with all these different constituencies, and partly um, what NASA did under his leadership was have the private sector take over some of these functions. Very controversial. Golden's aggressive management reforms resulted in a $40 billion reduction from prior budget plans, while rebalancing NASA programs and providing renewed emphasis on aeronautics research, science, robotic exploration of the solar system, and a revitalized Earth observation program. He had a vision for NASA. He had a vision for space exploration. He knew we needed innovation. He knew we needed science. He, we, he knew we needed technology. He knew all these things, but most importantly from his private sector experience, he knew how to accomplish these things, how to get things done. Among the many challenges facing the new administrator were increasing budgetary pressures and a lack of progress on the Space Station Freedom Program. The taxpayer had expended uh, eight or nine billion dollars on a space station design that had shown very little results. When Dan arrived, they hadn't yet built a single pound of hardware for the space station. And he initiated a redesign um, when he arrived. Boris Yeltsin and Bill Clinton um, asked uh, me uh, and Viktor Stepanovich Chernomyrdin, who was the premier or prime minister of Russia, to head up a binational commission that would take charge of all everything U.S.-Russia related. And the Clinton administration and Vice President Gore really wanted some opportunity. Russia was obviously changing and changing dramatically. It has an enormous nuclear arsenal. There were so many things we did not know about Russia and how to best cooperate. When this new relationship began, Dan uh, came up with the idea of exploring whether or not the U.S. and Russia could, in this new era, cooperate uh, productively uh, to do a space station together. I think it was particularly important when it came to the space station and, and many of the earlier era periods in its development because he not only had to sell the ideas of the space station itself, he had to sell the idea that doing it with the Russians made any sense. So it took a great effort by Dan to engage with his counterpart, Yuri Koptev. And Yuri Koptev had all the same challenges Dan had with the Duma and, uh, you know, the leadership of Russia, et cetera, and his own agencies. I think I remember Dan saying this to me, you know, that if we'd had to do this alone, or, you know, with a couple of others who didn't have much going on, it would have been incredibly more, much more expensive. And it just was the dynamic that he was able to use that brought that project together. The redesigned space station passed by a single vote in the U.S. House of Representatives in June 1993, and NASA formally invited Russia to join the program in October. And uh, late the following year, uh, we signed the agreement and started uh, uh, what became the International Space Station. The Shuttle Mir program evolved out of the initial ISS plans, as each country would fly the other's crew members to Russia's Mir space station. Phase one served as a testbed for the two nations to learn to work together in space. 
seven American astronauts completed long-duration missions aboard Space Station Mir between 1995 and 1998. Golden oversaw 60 space shuttle missions during his time as NASA Administrator. These missions included all 11 flights of the Shuttle Mir program, three servicing missions to the Hubble Space Telescope, the first flight of the Orbiter Endeavour, the first space shuttle flight commanded by a woman, Eileen Collins, the first 11 space station assembly missions, and many space lab and science missions. Dan Golden retired from NASA in November 2001, having served nine and a half years as NASA's longest tenured administrator. Dan Golden served three different presidents, two Republicans, one Democrat. Um, he started with us, eight years with Bill Clinton and a little bit of George W. Bush. He was uh, an extraordinarily effective leader, spokesman, and kind of spirit for NASA. I mean, he was himself a sort of fountain of enthusiasm about what he was doing, and it was contagious. International Space Station would not exist were not for Dan, period, full stop. It was that force of personality, the fact that he was working so many hours every day, all week long, to get that off the ground and up in the air and flying. In fact, the whole boom now in uh, private space launches uh, traces back in a major way to policy changes that were made when Dan was administrator. So when the full uh, roster of his contributions to the public interest in this nation. I just thought he did a terrific job and put NASA back on the course that uh, it needed to be on. That's why I say he was the right administrator at the right time for NASA. Space Foundation is proud to recognize Daniel S. Golden, recipient of the 2023 General James E. Hill Lifetime Space Achievement Award.